and welcome back to the Battle Bunker. So apologies it's been a bit long for we've posted uh, since our last video, but um, with this copper thing that's going on on YouTube at the moment, I have sort of been in a bit of a dilemma of uh, what to do. Um, so we've made the decision that um, we're going to go with the channel being Not For Kid Children, uh, Not For Kids, I think that's what it's called, um, instead of doing each individual video. Um, it's a bit of a shame really because as far as I'm concerned and that I said you know Jamie had an army before he was born so it's all about getting young people in the hobby yeah exactly mate I would rather sort of bring people into the hobby and I think Games Workshop is slowly doing that although their models are not for anyone under the age of uh, 14 you certainly look at their literature their literature is certainly moving to a younger audience so in time and the size of figures and the so size like, of figures are getting say bigger, like lego they? you've got normal lego lego mm. duplo for, yeah. it's the same sort of principle with that's right yeah marines, primaris marines i think i think also like with the funko pops and that they're also introducing and that is sort they're certainly all their licensed products their licensed products and that they're certainly lowering their their their, their audience and that but but anyway that, without that i mean obviously hopefully we won't get into trouble or anything like that I understand we've got a police that you know, help protect children on the internet and that, but that's also a parent parental thing as well, not just down to us as well. I, I, but that's that's why what we've come up with, and that's the only way, reason I can come out with it to say, not for kids, not for kids. which is a shame. But there we are. Moving on, um, a shout out. I want to do some on the videos and that. Um, I want to put a shout out to people and that because um, certainly the things I've been watching recently on YouTube. Um, there's one gentleman on there. Uh, Liberator 240. I'll leave a link in his description in the description below the video and that for his, his uh, channel and that. He's painted up some really beautiful um, artillery, French artillery recently. And I've also been looking back on some of his other videos and that, other Napoleonic stuff. He's certainly tempting me to get back into doing Napoleonics. Not me. Not me. <laughs> It'd be the sixth time in my wargaming career, as we say, that I've uh, bought, painted, sold, bought, painted, and sold, etc. for Napoleonic Armies. But certainly watching his videos and um, The Seventh Son and that, he's also done a few uh, lovely, lovely uh, videos and that on, on Napoleonic and Wars of the Roses, two of sort of my favourite periods, really. Uh, <laughs> but why are we here today? Well, today we're uh, sort of remembering um, paying homage. And paying homage as well to the Battle of the Bulge uh, or the Ardennes Offensive, watch on the Rhine, depending on which side of the, uh, of the forces that you're on. <laughs> but um, uh, we, we, we did, back in, um, in June, we did a uh, 75th anniversary game for D to remember D-Day and obviously everybody who fought for that from both sides. Um, and again, I'll leave a link in the description below. Uh, to the video and also our blog post in that the way we put that on. Um, Battle of the Bulge, December the 16th, started um, to, let's face it, the Allies' surprise. No one thought the Germans would come back through the Ardennes. Neither did the Germans another in time. No, to be fair. No. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but they did, and 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 you know, and if you and if history went slightly different it could have ended in a different way. Um, it certainly caught the Americans and the British High Command um, by surprise. Um, as the Ardennes was mainly used for, from the American perspective for R&R &R. um, and, and to bring new battalions, new divisions and that into the area to train them, get them ready for the next, next phase. Um, part of our problem was our broad front that we were fighting on. Our supply lines were stretched, so it made sense to have an area where we could sort of spread out and everything else. Um, but the Germans, the last ditch attempt, trying to get to Antwerp, they knew that's where our supply line was coming from. Get to Antwerp and obviously get us around the negotiation table. Um, it didn't work out. Um, and to be fair to the Americans, you know, fair play, you know, once they withdrew and they dug in and they got themselves organised, it was an epic defence, um, most notably Bastogne, the 101st Airborne Division. What they'd done in, in that, around that area was, was, was superb, you know, hats off to them all um, to fight in those conditions and that. Um, but our game today, so we're going to put on a little game because obviously we're taking a break from planning our Christmas game. because uh, It's that, taking a while. That's, that's full steam ahead. <laughs> um, and we are going to do a video on the build up to that Christmas game um, and we'll show you, and as I pan the camera around, you will start to see some of the things that will be on the table. It'll be a dead giveaway. It'll be a dead giveaway, <laughs> literally. Uh, <laughs> so I'll show you the table. Jamie and I will both go through our forces. 
what game we're playing. We're playing Chain of Command today. Um, I like Chain of Command personally. So do I. I, I, I we play bolt action, don't get me wrong, we'll, we'll play any game to be honest with you. We enjoy anything. But I like Chain of Command for its um, its its use of the command ability and, 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 and giving you the sort of problems that the field commanders would have had at the time. Um, that I, I really do like, and the ebb and flow that can certainly happen. Bolt action tries to cater for that through the dice out the bag mechanic, which is a great fun. Um, but just personal opinion, I, I prefer. And sometimes that. I find with bolt action that unless you're going out to do a specific project, mm. like if you just turned up to a centre to play a game, so let's say you're doing a British army, you might have in the same platoon a home guard, a regulars, and a airborne mm. unit inside of it. Yeah. Whereas, like, obviously, with chain of command, you're building your platoons to Historical. the structure. How historically, it is. you know, we're trying to get it more historically accurate, which is my my passion is really. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll show you the forces. We'll show you the table setup and everything. Oh, and see, this one is a cut down version. Yeah, we normally it's played on a six by four. We're playing on a three by three, and again, you'll see why we've done this because it is a break in what our our, our, our schedule that we've got going for games and, and preparations and that. Um, but we didn't want to miss out on the remembrance of, the, again, the 75th anniversary of the Battle of the Bulge. And we also want to say a pay our respects to those, those people that fought on both sides um, of, of that engagement. Um, so without further ado, I'll start off with my German force and then we'll show you, Jamie will go through his Americans uh, and then we'll, um, we'll show you the table. Okay. Well, here we are, it's my German platoon. It's cut down, because uh, as I'll go through it as I, I talk to you about it, um, it represents the sort of Volks Grenadiers that were uh, hastily put together for the fighting in this engagement that we're about to play. I'll start off over here. Um, that's my platoon commander there on the left. Um, senior leader leading the platoon forward, and to the right is another senior sergeant, again, another senior leader for, the, uh, for this platoon. Germans need all the command they can possibly get because they only get one senior leader in their general force makeup. To the right is a medical orderly, and now he'll help hopefully stave off the wounds from my leaders. Basic infantry, we've got a cut down infantry section, just one team. They're missing their um, MG42s. Again, as they were sort of hastily put together, it's just a rifle section and a junior leader there leading them at the front. They've got with them a support element of a 251 half track. Uh, behind there we have a Panzer Shrek team, which is down over there. And then another support element we have is a tripod mounted MG42 team, which is there. We have two ordinary infantry sections, both the same. Um, junior leader there out in front, to the left an MG42 team of three guys. And to the right of them, their second team is their rifle manoeuvre team. And then to the next, to the right of those, we have the same, exactly the same, another section of men complete with MG42 and rifle team. Hopefully, this will be enough to go against Jamie's American defenders um, and hopefully win the day. Okay, so this is my American force based off the 106th in their noble defence trying to stop the Germans coming through. If we start on the far left here, we have my lieutenant, who's a senior leader with a carbine, and to his right, we have a platoon sergeant with his SMG. Moving along, we have the my support element of a 30 calibre machine gun, five crew, and a bazooka team. Then to finish it all off, again, this is a cut down version, so I have two sections of riflemen, or two sections, we've got a sergeant with an SMG, and then eight rifles to the right, and then a BAR team of three men. And this is again repeated for the other section. Obviously in chain of command, the attacker will have more support elements than the defender, so let's hope I can hold back those Germans. Well, here's the table set up. Our game today sort of represents the dogged American defence around St. Vith um, doing a rear guard action. The action has already happened uh, previously. The, the Germans have pressed and attacked. They've lost a few vehicles along with the Americans losing a few vehicles. Um, it's a sort of a tight engagement, an infantry mainly engagement. Um, as I said, normally we play this on a 6x4 and I've got a bigger map, a snow map, which we'll do, do for the game. but. 
as you'll see, this is just to represent a very close, close in engagement infantry action. The trees were the four brain ones which are no longer available on the website. Um, and the buildings are the Warlord Games uh, plastic um, farmhouse buildings they do. Um, I bought the, I think it was the village set and that that uh, and put them together like this. So I'll get some closer shots for you. There we are, like that. And there's Jamie's half track over there, destroyed. Yeah, there's his Greyhound there and his Sherman tank there. Coming back here, that's my Panzer IV. And I've got a little tracked vehicle. It's also been knocked out from the previous battle before our game starts. But the Jeep has survived. The Jeep has survived just to the left of the building. <laughs> um, so there we are, that's all the table set up. As I said, if I pan around slightly to my other table, you'll see there's the start of part of what's going to happen at Christmas. Better not tell Mel I've shown you that because that's the video she's doing. Oh, she does watch these videos. Oh well, I'm in trouble. Right, there we go. So that's the table all set up and we'll get, get ourselves down for the game. So there we are then, that's the table all set up. Forces are out. It's now time to sort of throw down some dice, start doing the patrol phase of chain of command and then deploy our jump off points. There we are then. What a stroke of luck. We're on the second turn, although chain of command's played in phases, on my second phase, I managed to roll three sixes, which I ended the turn, which was a bit of luck, because Jamie's squad in this building here had all a load of overwatch markers on there. And obviously I wanted to advance my Germans across that open field. So I ended the turn, which removed his overwatch markers. Other than that, what's happened, Jamie's took some action. He's took some shots from that section there and the BAR team. And I've lost a couple of men on this section going across this field here. Um, I've managed to deploy my machine gun team along here and I've got another section sort of in that building there. Jamie is sneakily on his other deployment marker on the right hand side there's bringing another section of men in. My objective is to capture either that jump off point there or the one behind that building there. That's the one I'm aiming for at the moment. Well, be, you know, he's going to defend that really well. Um, Jamie, for Jamie to win, he's obviously got to hold on to it and uh, reduce my force morale to zero. So that's the area we are at the moment. We'll come back with some more video shortly. So here we are. The game's advanced on a little bit more. Unfortunately, my section that was coming across the field there is taking withering fire from the Americans in the first building there and in that one there. Um, certainly a formidable defensive line here. I've managed to put some pins on there, but Jamie's deployed his senior leader on the objective marker there, which is rallying the pins off of those three units there. And I've just managed just to keep up a sort of a steady rate of fire, but nothing really doing at the moment to get into that position. And the Jeep's still there. And the Jeep is still there. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it, a few more phases on, we'll continue playing. Where we are then, game's advancing on. I lost my section that was in the field over there. Jamie lost his machine gun team which was down here. And now I've brought my half track on, deployed the uh, rifle team that was in it. It's just taken a pan uh, bazooka shot at it, managed to save that, don't know how. But, um, and it's just veered off into the cover there. And now I'm amassing my last infantry to make the last push onto the position here to capture that objective marker. Jamie has lost quite a few infantry riflemen in this uh, section here. As you can see, he's now got his bazooka team that was firing down the road. He's in a strong position because he still has his second infantry section in this building here. And there's no way that I'll be able to get to that objective marker. So the whole, the whole push is going to be centred around this uh, T-junction across the top here to this building to capture that objective. So that's where we are at the moment. So here we are then, end of the game. American victory. Germans reduced to zero force rate in and very battered.
the last section just routing back off the table where with loads of shock applied to them the team that got out the half track managed to just push up to there the end of the t-junction there but they just couldn't get any further I was losing command dice so I restricted on what I could order in Jamie was down to two command dice and was just luckily he just rolled enough to get his other sections or his senior leaders to activate which in turn then activated the sections so he kept up a withering fire and the re-rolling ones for the carbine and grand roll is is awesome um, but there we are so that's how the table looked at the end and uh, we'll have a sit down on a post uh, game analysis so there we are then american victory in our battle of the bulge uh remembrance game um thoroughly enjoyed it chain of command is a brilliant set of rules very intense um and you had some lucky dice rolls again no 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 <laughs> i think you managed to pull some out it was back and forth it was yeah it was but back. when you got reduced to one order dice just keep rolling that six which i did i did that's you that's... lost about three phases yeah. of activation if you don't know with chain of command you get a number of um order dice um depending on what type of grade of uh, platoon you are um, we were both playing as regular platoon so we get five order dice um, and the results of what you roll on those order dice denotes what you can and can't do with your leaders, your units, etc. What you're activating in that phase. Exactly, yeah. Um, and, and, with, and so one to four is basically you can activate teams, junior leaders, senior leaders, etc. And sections of men. Um, a five will give you a point of your chain of command dice. Which I managed to not actually acquire. We well, had two, did I? I was... Three, no, three. I had you three. had three dice and I had The chain none. of command dice basically um, is a dice that where it gives you extra abilities in command that you can do so you can end the turn um, and also you can bring in other things and, and, and do other sort of nice little tricks and that in the game. I managed to get three of those but it didn't pay off for me. Um, if you roll sixes, if you roll one six um, and your five dice then the phase will pass to your, your, your opponent and he will get to activate his troops afterwards. Um, if you roll two sixes out of your five dice, or however many command dice you've got, um, you get to retain the initiative and roll again. So you get basically a double phase. If you roll three sixes or more, you basically can end the turn and retain the initiative and have another go again. Um, again, we, didn't, we had a couple of times where we ended the turn. I rolled a couple yeah. of three sixes. Um, and also say I had my chain of command dice, but... I was just absolutely bottlenecked down there on that on that road. Um, I managed to bring the half track in. It came up the road slightly. Um, Jamie deployed um, his bazooka, bazooka team. Yeah, took a shot. It sort of bounced off. It ricocheted off. I had to veer off out of the way. And Which that was probably what saved me. It, yeah, it did because I think if I could have got the half track up closer. I you could have blocked the other men coming forward. That's what I was hoping to do. I was hoping to use that sort of a, 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 shield. a shield. Get the men out into the building that was yeah. at the end of the crossroads there and use that as a jump off point to go into them to assault the uh, to the building where the, the the objective marker was i think the real saving grace for me was definitely that re-rolling ones on the oh, grand, massive the carbines the BARs. massive that is a, that is a massive roll i mean even if you if you're rolling sort of 10 or 12 dice and you roll sort of two or three ones and you get one or two hits back from that that can have a big impact it's had a massive impact um, we were also very unlucky at the end because our commanders just kept getting shot and wounded. <laughs> all wounded we went from like quite a high force round to basically nothing in sort no of, like, time. two or three yeah, phases no time um it was like past the bandages it was that it was that bad <laughs> well no because your medic didn't get close my enough. medic didn't get close enough <laughs> he was just he was again taking so many much fire um going across the ground open ground there um but yeah very enjoyable game um, definitely, you know, once obviously we get the Christmas game out of the way, we are looking to play a proper game, a full size game on our 6x4 or even bigger. Because um, I know Richard and the boys have got some uh, winter stuff, so hopefully we might be able to play a bigger game. Um, and we're sort of also, we had the idea, and this is going back a bit, mind, um, the idea of us getting back in, getting into the bulge uh, area was. We quite fancy this sort of like the uh, weird World War Two as well. I mean, I'm a fan of Captain America, the original Captain America, First where Avenger. First Avenger, where again he's in World War Two, he's fight, fighting Hydra, um, and I know Jamie's a fan as well. Yeah. So, Conflict Forty Seven for us fits that bill. Um, so we, we we quite imagine doing this sort of 
If you um, almost make a skirmish game using bolt action skirmish. Yeah, exactly. Like, we've we, we, we sort of definitely looked at that. Or we play a bigger game, bigger game with use, this. It, use this, or we use, use Conflict 47. Again, just to bring some sort of mechs and that into the game, as well as playing World War II. But II. obviously That's this game was definitely a homage to the... Definitely. We wanted to, we wanted to certainly stop what we were doing and obviously pay homage to and our respects to obviously all of the men and fought in the uh, the Ardennes offensive um, and like, like I said earlier on you know the feats of defence that when the Americans pulled back and actually consolidated and dug in and especially around uh, you know around St Vith and that this is what what we roughly placed our, our troops our game on was the actions around St Vith and again the actions around Almblev you know things like that and Stavolo um, these were iconic battles, and you know, and uh, definitely worth sort of taking salute in those those men that, that that fought there and the families and that. Um, and again, you know, had the Germans pushed through to Antwerp, who knows what would have happened after that? You know, definitely a bold campaign, uh, a surprise, um, and and proved what you know grit grit yeah. true grit now that's yeah. i think that's the, the, to be fair and again like i said earlier Sends it up. you know the 101st airborne around bastoyne and that definite true grit and that was some some excellent defensive uh, 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 uh job that they've done around there um and also sort of like you know with us we like to sort of like sort of remember all of that while we're playing our games and at the same time have a bit of fun as well, like you know. So who was your hero in the game? My M soldier played the best. My MVP for the game? Hmm. I think my MVP for the game was my um my sergeant, my senior my, my, my platoon sergeant, who was at the start of the game just running around trying to rally the troops, get the shock off of them, and then enough was enough. He he, he got killed. <laughs> he just he just Got obliterated towards the end. Once the section of men went, first section went across the field there, he just, that was it, he's gone. I think my MVP would definitely be Private Buckley, who killed that senior leader. <laughs> did. The rifleman, it's just with been the, promoted. With those three rolling ones, but we won't, we won't talk about that. No, well, <laughs> did the job in the end. Yeah, it did. No, it was very good. It was, um, it was, it was very intense at one point, because I thought, I thought the Germans had it. I really did. I, so did I. I, I, I thought. I, I thought. I, I thought we, we actually pushed them so hard. I thought, yeah, yeah, never, never a couple of phases, and we're in. But you know, grenades going in. But and, me managing to bring on my senior leaders basically got rid of that early yeah. shock. I, the, the shock you had on that first section, um, halfway through the game, I thought, yeah, that was it. My, my MG forty two on the tripod, it was just constantly firing in and firing in and firing, piling on the shock. Once that machine gun. Your machine gun went, and my like me, fire. I could focus all my shots yeah. and that into that building, and I just thought I had it, but you know, there we are. I didn't have it at all. But um, but there we are. Hopefully, uh, you've enjoyed this uh, this video, and uh, hopefully, we're going to do some more. I hope you come back in that. But um, if you're new to our channel, and that you know, please by all means like, subscribe, and um, and, and follow Click us. The bell. Um, and I, what I'll do is, as I said, I mentioned earlier on, I will leave a link in the description below to our D-Day game that we've done earlier on in the year. Um, check it out if you Pay enjoy it. And, yeah, and see what we've done to that game. Um, thanks for watching and uh, stay tuned for our early bash of the Christmas game setup. Thank you.